Fishing and mountain biking are the two things where my brain just turns off. I think that's super true, that they just sort of erase whatever else is going on. It's a now thing. It's not a what's happening, what's going to happen in the future, or I'm worried about this. It's like I'm in the moment. You can just erase a lot of stuff and disappear if you let yourself. I can't quite figure out why the North Shore of Minnesota connects with me so much. It doesn't really look like home, per se, but there's just something about it. You know, especially the further north you go, or it starts getting rocky, and lichens are covering stuff, and trees all start to show the hardness. I don't know what it is about it up here, but so beautiful. My name is Mike Reamer. Uh, I grew up overseas in, in South Korea and first came to the U.S. actually in, in 1984. Been in Minnesota a long time now. My name is Hansi Johnson. I live in Duluth, Minnesota. I kind of grew up in a more of a bait and bullet family <laughs> as a kid. And I, I remember early on thinking of the bike almost as a tool for access, even as a kid. Access to, you know, trout lakes and even hunting opportunities. We lived in a rural situation and uh, we lived near a pretty good trout stream. And I would ask my dad if I could go fishing. And at first I would start walking there. And then I realized I couldn't get there fast enough. <laughs> so then I could, then I realized I could take my bike. If I ride this, I can get there where other people can't get more efficiently and it's not motorized, you know, because there's a lot of places where motors aren't allowed, but bikes are, especially in national forests. It's kind of cool to be able to say, I'm not just going to carry all this stuff. I'm going to roll in, I'm going to get deeper than the other guy, and I'm going to have more fish opportunities because of it. Plus, it's just adventurous, you know, it's like riding the last big downhill in or something, you know, I probably wouldn't have had that adrenaline rush hiking kind of funny, like, it's just a bit of doing the same thing, except we're maybe, like, a little more technologically adept in how we go places now. And going for longer. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just a quick over and fish and home to get lunch, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, you're staying for days at a time. Yeah. <laughs> With lots of gear. We got a lot of gear. I was looking around, like, that's pretty, oh, yeah. pretty impressive amount of stuff. <laughs> and then you got everything you need for life for a yeah. few days. What's your fishing routine? How do you like, how do you gear up? As soon as I get the waders on and the boots on, my rod's usually rigged already. Maybe I'll change a fly, maybe not. You start walking through the woods or, or down a little trail. There's a bit of wildness to it. You know, every flood changes it. Like that feeling of, I guess, unpredictability. And it, I mean, as soon as you're in the water, all that other stuff's disappeared. And time then is just passing. But you've never thought about like anything except yeah. how do I fool these fish? How do I fool this fish? How do I fool this fish? The challenge of it is kind of also the attraction of it. You know, there's definitely days where I'll go out and just have the worst, like literally catch no fish. Half the time, the, the lines in my lap, like I've hooked my ear before. <laughs> But then you go out another day, and it's just like, you are just on it, you know? Like, you're just like, dang, I, I did that right, I did this right, I tied that knot right, got the right fly, and you catch these fish, and all of a sudden you're just, you know, like, you're touching the sun. Here's this amazing 
gorgeous thing that you just pulled into coming to your hand and that that just like erases all those bad days something i'll be able to do hopefully until i'm 70 or 80 or however long i live i guess i i kind of in my head wish that people would just start looking at cycling slightly differently than we sort of let ourselves be talked into or marketed. So like this bike, you know, Black Bro, it gives you this chance to actually like craft a new version or a different version or your own version of cycling. If you want to combine fishing, go for it. But if you want to combine it with surfing, do that. If you want to strap skis to it, do that. If you just want to go camp, man, that's a pretty great idea too. I mean, what's cool is we've got this magical place here to come to this public, incredible public spot. Public space. It's a yeah. public free space. We get to live here for a few days, right? The good life, mm. fires and tents and staying up. Fried trout. From this free lake. Yeah. And the cool thing is we get to ride trails to get here. These places are special, not just because we see beautiful things, but because we actually live in a country where we have the ability to go out in these big open landscapes and experience them still to this day. Sure. And like, that's pretty awesome. Like, that's why I live in the state.